Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome. We're going to talk about cars. We're going to talk about self-driving cars today. Last year, we introduced the Drive PX self-driving car computer. And I said three things. I said that in the future, when you build cars, it's going to be a lot more like a computer. That the ability for car companies and uh, system OEMs to configure cars by connecting sensors and controllers one at a time and evolve it over time is going to be more and more difficult. That you have to approach it from a computing system perspective. Software is going to be a very big part of what you do. And ongoing improvements of the software is going to be very important. The second thing I said was that computer vision technology that had evolved up to this point using hand-coded features and engineers crafting pieces of code to detect objects in, this, in, the, in the world are going to be difficult to continue to advance to the point where we could have cars that drives itself. And that we would use a technology called deep learning. The third thing I said was that all of this computation capability is going to have to be done in real time. Because your car is driving through the streets, a lot of things are happening around the world, and you want to be able to detect it, understand what to do, and have the car keep you out of harm's way and navigate safely. So the third thing I said was we're going to need supercomputing technology. All of this we've been working on the last year. And today I'm going to give you an update on that. Several thousand man years of effort have gone into advancing the state of the art of self-driving cars at NVIDIA this last year. So first of all, I'm going to show you, I'm going to tell you the punchline. Ladies and gentlemen, the NVIDIA Drive PX2. This is the world's first in-car AI supercomputer, and it's designed to make it possible for us to realize the vision of self-driving cars. It has 12 CPU cores, four chips, each with Pascal GPUs in it, with a combined processing capability of eight teraflops, with a special new instruction design, new set of instructions designed for deep learning that makes it possible for us to achieve 24 deep learning teraops per second. It's built with 16 nanometer FinFET. All together, this entire supercomputer fits in your trunk very nicely, the size of a lunchbox, 250 watts, all in that little tiny device. The com computational capability of PX2 is equivalent to essentially 150 MacBook Pros. Imagine 150 MacBook Pros of processing capability in your trunk. All of this within the size of a school lunchbox, 250 watts. It needs to be water-cooled. And the reason why it needs to be water-cooled is because we want to be able to make it possible for you to uh, have this operate in all kinds of severe conditions that a car could be enjoyed. Okay, so NVIDIA Drive PX2. But let me back up a little bit and tell you the reason why we're doing this. Our vision is to make it possible for us to finally realize the self-driving car. Now, there's a lot of ways you can think about the self-driving car. From a technology perspective, it's utterly amazing. If you ever had enjoyed the, proce enjoy the process of having a car drive you to work, it's just a really wonderful experience. However, technology aside, the contributions to society is arguably incredible. Transportation, mobility is one of the most important things in society. It is central to how almost any culture in society is made. Humans are the least reliable part of the car. We represent almost all of the fatalities uh, that are caused around the world, over a million deaths each year, and the human is the most unreliable part of it. So whether we're augmenting the, the human so that we could help people drive better or replacing the human altogether, self-driving car technology is surely going to make a great contribution to society. Second thing, of course, if you can have cars that drive itself, all of a sudden it's possible for us to accelerate this entire movement of personal mobility as a service. Fewer cars on the road, the cars that are on the road are utilized more frequently. The convenience of having mobility as a service is incredible. And then third, 
Fewer cars, cars that are utilized more frequently, will ultimately result in having fewer cars in urbans. And we'll be able to redesign our urban environment and make the neighborhoods more beautiful, more enjoyable. More parks will replace, will be replaced by, parks will replace parking lots, and uh, the convenient factor is incredible. And so whether you think about self-driving cars from the money that it's gonna save um, from the reduced reductions in accidents, or the time that it's gonna save us, or just you know, the incredible freedom it's gonna provide people who can't drive today for whatever reason, uh, self-driving cars is gonna revolutionize society. Our vision is to create the computing platform by which the entire automotive industry can realize this vision.